The Arbin's theme and variations on the Carnival of Venice uh, is a piece which has long been considered a rite of passage for brass musicians. Uh, it's a piece which combines all the artifacts and all the musical technique that you'll learn in his method. Um, and it combines that into a set of variations which is quite technically difficult and something that provides a nice feeling of accomplishment when one has uh, got that piece of music under their belt. Whilst it's written predominantly for valved instruments, either cornet, trumpet or euphoe, uh, it is also possible to play the variations on trombone. So what I'm planning on doing with this video is taking those variations and playing them on trombone and uh, stopping to provide a little bit of commentary on how one might approach some of the more technical aspects of that piece. Uh, because my Arbin's book is in a state of disrepair, I'm actually going to use the almost identical version which is written in this, uh, in this book of music here called Carnival. Um, it's arranged by uh, Donald Hunsberger, but I'm not sure what he's done uh, to this piece. It is almost identical to the Arbin's variations. Uh, and this is the axe that I'll be using to cut down this tree. It's my Jupiter 740R L. There's a little run that's included in this particular version that isn't original to the Arbin's arrangement, uh, or at least it's not original to the Arbin's version that's in my Arbin's book, uh, but it is something that many performers often include. So now onto the theme of the piece. <laughs> With variation one, we use our slide a lot more, um, but we also need to pay attention to the slurs and the staccato notes that are written. If we don't pay attention to those, the feel of the first variation is going to be lost. <laughs> It's also very important to ensure that you get your slide positioning just correct because we've got this bar here. And that bar is a variation on this bar. So it's important that we get those accidentals in there to come through. Now on to the second variation. 
The key thing here to remember is that whilst we can use the trigger for some of those triplets, unfortunately it's going to result in a different sound and a different articulation uh, for the rest of those triplets because we can't always use the trigger in a convenient manner. So we compare this with the next phrase which can't use a trigger and we get a conflicting and non-consistent feel to those, uh, to those phrases which is something I like to avoid. Even if it's harder to do, it's better to remain consistent across the whole variation. Um, so it's very important to have quick slide positions, but it's also important to remember that the jump, the low note that we jump down to, is not the key part of those phrases. It's actually the note that we end up on, back up the octave, that is the one that is accented and tenutoed as well in this case. Uh, so those two, the octave jump needs to be put into its correct uh, place in life, which in this case is no more significant than any of the other notes around it. We don't play it like this. Unfortunately, I've heard that a lot too often, and it always sort of makes one of my eyes twitch whenever I hear that. So that's something we need to be uh, careful to avoid. The last thing is when we get to the highest part of that on this triplet, it's very easy to, to uh, go down instead of up on that triplet. So to do this... And of course that's wrong. Um, it's very easy to do that accidentally, but one must always aim for that top note when we get to those triplets. Now, the next part is something that I struggle with a lot. Personally, my uh, tonguing, my double tonguing is very slow, and it's something I've never been able to develop beyond what I'm naturally uh, able to achieve. So this next section is the one part of the piece where I just physically can't play. It's something I can't do. I can't, I either have to slow down everything else to be able to double tongue the next bit, or I have to uh, not double tongue it. And so I choose the latter. So I end up just playing this either flutter tongued, uh, which is to go into your instrument, um, or I just play it slurred in a single tonguing fashion, such as this. Uh, or the flutter tonguing sounds like this. It's a little bit more tenable to flutter tongue on a valved instrument where the pushing of the valves articulates the notes for you. Uh, but single tongue in is, a, is, is, is the way that I've always got, got around that. Uh, the trill. Trills on a trombone present a couple of difficulties. With this particular trill, we've got a very easy way uh, to, to facilitate it, and that is just to wiggle the first trigger. It's not an ideal way of approaching this, but with the trombone, it is one of the few ways that we can have. If you were to lip trill it, unfortunately the lip trill will alternate your fundamental with the wrong partial. The trill is with these notes, and unfortunately if you lip trill it, you're going to do these notes. And if you use an alternative position uh, for that note, you end up with something a little bit different still. Which is a minor key. So the only other way to do that would be to um, do some other weird arrangement of triggers where you can get both of those notes in the same position. Um, but unfortunately, the tonal difference that you're going to get for it is going to ruin the effect. So what I generally do is just wiggle my first trigger. Unfortunately, it's the next best thing that we have got um, because we don't really have um, that facility available to us as trombonists. There is one trombonist out there who transposes this entire piece up a lot uh, so that he so that, that trill can be achieved without having to move the slide, but 
Uh, I think that that version of the Carnival of Venice is incredibly poor just because of the liberties that it takes with tuning. Uh, with the grace notes in this variation, one must always remember that they are not the ending of a two-bar phrase. They are the start of the next two-bar phrase. So, for instance, we've got this. So the grace note there is leading into the next uh, to the next phrase. It is not the end of that first phrase. I hear this all too often. And of course that's wrong. Something I've been guilty of myself previously, um, but it is wrong. Leading to the next variation, variation three. This is possibly one of the harder ones for the trombone because it involves a lot of ferocious slide movements. But to make that even more difficult is the fact that these notes are grouped in lots of seven. So we have to, so instead of double tonguing or triple tonguing, we have to both triple tongue and double tongue. So what we have for the group of seven is a group of three and then two groups of two. So a triple tongue, two double tongues, and then we single tongue the landing note. So like that. The next part, the next part is one where one must have complete mastery of your scales. It's all based on, uh, if you're reading treble clef, an F major scale and arpeggio, uh, followed with the uh, dominant seventh. But as long as you've got good mastery of your scales and arpeggios, the next part shouldn't pose too much more difficulty than the previous section. At least it's all double tongue. You don't have to worry about anything exotic with your tonguing. So if I play all of variation three now at the speed that I perform it at, it would sound something like this. Unfortunately, uh, a lack of practice has seen me trip over my slide a couple of times there, so hopefully you guys can forgive me for that. Turning the page, we now see the triple tonguing section. Triple tonguing is a technique that most of us should be familiar with at this level, but a brief overview is that instead of going ta 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 into our instrument, we go ta 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 or da 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 or any of those sort of different tonguing styles. The first part of the fourth variation is quite straightforward because all the notes that we're triple tonguing are on the same position. We don't have to worry about articulating different notes whilst in the same bracket of triple tonguing. Later on in this variation though, we do have to. There are a number of exercises in the Arbin's book which deals with scales, you know, triple tonguing scales, and those are invaluable when it comes to tackling this variation. Thank <laughs> you. 
Creation 5 mixes the Carnival of Venice theme with triple tongued runs. Now this can take quite a lot of work uh, to get recognisable but the key thing is to remember to bring out the melody. <laughs> That's the melody that we're bringing out, however in this fifth variation it's buried a little bit under a whole lot of other notes which you have to play but not have brought into as much prominence as the melody. I've never been very good at that variation, but you get the idea. The last part of this variation is all triple tonguing and it's all scales. So if you want to get good at this, just practice your scales ad nauseum. Not a great rendition, but now I'll play all of that variation without stopping. <laughs> The next variation is our slower variation. In uh, traditional air varies, we would come when we get to this part of the piece, we might have a minor section, but it's very customary. It's very customary to have something slower, usually in a minor key. Um, but in this case, we don't have that. We have an adagio section which has the uh, direction in a reminiscent mood. Not sure what we're supposed to be reminiscing about when one set of words that goes to this piece is my hat. It has three corners. Three corners has my hat. And if it had not three corners, then it wouldn't be my hat. So perhaps we're supposed to be reminiscing about those deep, soulful, meaningful lyrics. Uh, but what to take away is it's slow. And when, it pl when we play slow, we need to pay uh, particular attention to our tuning. Um, and we need to also pay a particular attention to uh, our articulation, the dynamics. Uh, and just those smaller things that we can sometimes mask when we're playing a rip snorting balls to the wall sort of piece. This is how I might approach variation six. <laughs> Variation 7 we get back into some of the more virtuosic technique. Uh, some people start this out really slow and then wind it up in a, in a manner like this. That is not something that I like doing so I always recommend to start off the uh, variation at the speed you mean to continue. It's particularly useful if you're playing this piece with a pianist who 
um, who you haven't done a lot of rehearsal with. Um, it's much easier to pick a tempo and stick with it than it is to start slow and then work together to slowly tune something up. Variation 7 produce, um, Variation seven uh, involves a technique that is very easy to do, well, relatively easy to do on, uh, on, on a valved instrument, but quite difficult to do on a slide instrument. And that is the slur tongue, slur tongue uh, technique that we have here. There are some uh, instances, of it, instances of it where we can use our slide, such as at the start. But unfortunately, from then on, and we don't really have that luxury. So what I generally just do is uh, double tongue the lot. Right, so at the proper speed. The next part is sets of four descending uh, semiquavers, fragments of scales. Uh, and one must always articulate the first one of them and then just sort of wiggle the slide around and spit into your mouthpiece and hope that the instrument does the rest of the work. Now, the final variation, unfortunately, it is beyond me to play it uh, as written. It's something I could try at a slower speed. But it's not something I can really play. It's not something that I've been uh, able to achieve in the past. So what I generally do is rewrite this in such a manner where it starts quite easy and we get the theme coming through. And then instead of doing the little interludes of I generally will tongue uh, those as all the same notes. So we get this. to this part, I'll then ramp up the tonguing efforts. And then one chooses the way that they wish to elaborately finish this piece. So anyway, I hope that you guys have learned something. Um, if you've got any further questions, please feel welcome to comment down below. Uh, I generally get back to most people who ask me questions. Uh, thanks for watching.